In this kitchen vlog, I am going to attempt another repair attempt because I don't know what I'm going to run into, but I saw some YouTube videos that assured me that I could do this thing. The thing is, the light bulb in my microwave oven burned out, and it's not a simple task like unscrewing the old bulb and screwing in a new one. You have to take the microwave apart somewhat. You have to at least pull the cover off. And um, I ordered a bulb from Amazon, shipped from the USA. The idiots <laughs> shipped it in a padded envelope. It's glass. It's not steel. Of course it arrived broken. It went through the US mail. They have machines that do that, that break glass. Anyways, um, <laughs> It's going to get me in trouble. Um, I ordered another one. This one was shipped from China, but it was shipped in a proper shipping carton. Look at inside styrofoam. All padded with styrofoam inside. Here's the bulb. Look at that. Nicely padded. It's wrapped in soft foam. There it is. There's the bulb. I'll give you a close-up of that to show you why it's a bit of a challenge. So there's the bulb right there. Comes socket and bulb all in one piece. The weird part about it is on the back there's these two terminals. So I'm going to have to unplug the old bulb, remove the wires from the terminals, put this in after I remove the bulb, and then plug it back in again. And one thing just worth mentioning if you want to attempt a project like this, it comes with an instruction sheet that tells you that although the bulb says 250 volts on the back, 2 amp 250 volts, on the front it says 125 volts 20 watts. The bulb can be used up to 250 volts, but it's designed to be used in a 120 volt setting, if that makes any sense. So there it is. There's my microwave oven. Bit of a job getting this on top of the counter because I don't keep my microwave oven on top of a kitchen counter. I need the space. There isn't a lot of counter space in a mobile home. So I keep this inside of a cupboard under the kitchen counter. Works very well. Okay, according to what I saw on YouTube, on the back, spin this around here a little bit. Like so, there are five screws on the back here, Phillips screws that I have to remove, and then I can lift the cover off. All right, let's see how well that goes. Oh, these aren't Phillips screws. These are special screws that you have to have a special wrench. I gotta go see if I have a wrench to do that. Are they Allen wrenches? Let me go see what I've got. Okay, here's the problem with the screw. I've got a spline wrench. I have these because I used to fix IBM typewriters. And there was a time when IBM typewriters were all put together with screws that required spline wrenches rather than Allen wrenches. That won't go in there very well. It won't go in there because there's a little tip thing inside. So it's like what you need is a hollow spline wrench. They don't make it easy because they don't want you to do it yourself. I mean, you have to pay a technician. What is it, $55 an hour, $60 an hour, maybe $120 an hour to change a light bulb? Hello. This is what they make Dremels for. All right, get this started. And I'm working very carefully. I've got a metal cutting blade. Turn that off. Got a regular screwdriver here. Get rid of that metal dust. Put a screwdriver in there. Out twists the screw. Just like that. Ta da! How difficult was that? All right, I got five more, four more to, re to remove, and then I can take the cover off and start looking for the light bulb. 
And if you don't believe me, and there's no reason why you shouldn't, there it is. IBM, right? Socket, keys, IBM. I got these like when I was 16, 17 years old because my first real job, other than bussing tables at a restaurant, was fixing typewriters. So these things are like 50 years old and they still work. Check this out. Besides the five on the back, there are two on the side that have to be removed. But these don't require a special wrench. These are just Phillips screws. Yes, that's a plane going overhead. I live near the airport. If only the others had been that easy. All right, now I think that cover is ready to come off. Got all the screws out. The last step is to get this case off. It looks loose, right? But it kind of locks into the front here, so you kind of have to lift and pull it back because it locks into a little lip right here. And now this case can lift off. What does that thing look like right there? That looks like the bulb to me, right? And it doesn't screw in, it just kind of snaps in. That looks pretty easy. And because I'm trying to be careful, I drew a diagram of where the wires go. Blue to the bottom, white to the top. I should be able to hopefully just lift this, oh, lift this bend back really easily. And there it is, the old bulb all black and burnt out. All right, let's get that replaced. Okay, are they the same? Not exactly. The old bulb, see if I can show you that, has a wide blade and a narrow blade. The new bulb has two narrow blades. This blade here is wide. This blade is narrow. Both of these are narrow, but it should work. All right. So blue to the bottom. This is the narrow blade that slides on. This is the wide blade that I'm a bit concerned about. I mean, it's only a light bulb. It's not like I'm running 220 volts. I'm going to really have to force that on all the way to get that to connect because it gets wide toward the top. There it is. That's locked into place. Make sure that's not going to vibrate loose. No. And then just line up the two holes with the two pins, snap it into place. And that's locked in place. Okay, next step is to plug it in and then open the door and see if the light comes on. All right, let's see what happens. Press the button, open the door. I can see from over here the light is on and there's the light on in my microwave. I have light. So there it is, assembled again. It's just simply a matter of doing the exact opposite that I did to take the cover off. You just want to make sure when you get the cover on that when you slide it into place that you get it fitted into the grooves on the sides as well as the top. It's like a tongue and groove joint that everything slides into and then you put the screws in, the two side screws and then the five back screws. Now I'm ready to put this back into the cupboard where it came from. So there it is. I have light again in my microwave, which is important because again, the microwave is down inside of a cupboard and there isn't a lot of light down there. Was it easy? Well, it was easy enough considering what it would have cost me for a service call and for the bulb. They probably would have charged me $20, $25 for that bulb. I got it for between six and $7 on Amazon free shipping if you buy enough. Um, so it worked out well for me, easy enough. If, it bulb, if that bulb burns out again within the next year, I'll probably order two or three of them just to have them on hand because it's a relatively easy fix. 
So that's my kitchen vlog for today. Hopefully you were a little bit entertained by it or bored enough to get a good nap. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so.